had a rubber inner tube and I had a galvanized metal basket and I would go out in the bays between the mainland um, and the island, the island being Atlantic City and then a whole barrier, uh, I, a line of islands along the, the Jersey Shore and, and the bays are, are shallow there, relatively shallow and when the tide would be going out uh, we'd go out and get down into the water and we would actually tread. We had little rubber booties on our feet, had the basket in the, in the inner tube and we would slide our feet along the bottom of the bay and feel the clam and reach down and pick it up and throw it in the basket. <clears throat> it was a very lucrative job. In, in 1966, I made about $100 a day. Uh, clam digging. I have no idea where all that money went. <laughs> well, although I do know that I, I ended up buying a new boat every year. So that's probably where, where it went. <clears throat> I remember some frightful experiences uh, clam digging. Uh, one time uh, a, a, about a six foot shark was about 10 feet away from me with the fin coming directly toward me and fortunately that galvanized basket was a great protector and the shark swam away. But the most harrowing experience I had was when suddenly a thunderstorm came up uh, while we were clam digging and I had never been in quite as violent a thunderstorm as I was that day. And I was by myself in the boat. We were all trying to find our way back. The wind was howling, the rain was falling, and most significantly, the lightning was striking all around us. And, you know, you're in a, a boat on the water, lightning popping around you it, it was quite frightful and so at one point um, I just I was sure I was going to die but I wanted to die on land so I rammed my boat up onto the marshland and I laid in the bottom of the boat and I prayed I said Lord please don't let me die probably said other things uh, in addition to that, but it was, <clears throat> I have no idea how long um, I, I was there. It was, it, it seemed interminable, an extended period of time. But I felt the presence of God, and I had a sense that I was going to be okay, and uh, you can imagine the euphoria that I had when the storm passed. And while the sun didn't come out and the rain didn't completely stop, but it, 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 it lessened enough for me to be able to get, pull the boat back off of the marsh, start the engine, and actually head, head back in, which was probably about 15 minutes to the dock. <clears throat> well, I'm not certain that my experience uh, on the Absecon Bay could match the experience of Jesus with the disciples on this body of water crossing from one side to the other when the storm came up. Um, I could imagine just a little bit of how frightened they must have been. My guess is that these people were uh, people who had experienced the storms before. But clearly this was uh, a significant one, so much so that they went and woke Jesus up. Now, it's hard for me to imagine that anybody could sleep through a violent storm like that, but that's what the story says, and that's what Jesus was doing. And then he called to the waves, and he called to the wind, and he said, be calm.
really a lot like this moment. Can you imagine the euphoria that the disciples felt when the wind and the waves calmed down? Thank you, God, for not just hearing the voice of your son, Jesus, who called to you, but thank you for hearing our voices when we call. In his name.